but John, tell us, um, we felt a little, uh, I guess this is probably an aftershock this morning. Yeah, we had a little aftershock this morning. Uh, it was at about uh, 316, or right at the end of 315. Uh, 2.0 is the magnitude. And from the U.S. Geological Survey website, I see that a few people in the York, Maine area felt it, but not in New Hampshire or Massachusetts. Okay. And I, so I, uh, was it a 1.9 1, 1. officially or 2.0? Well, the preliminary, the first magnitude I saw was 1.9. USGS may have changed it, but I've been busy doing other things to look gotcha. at it. Gotcha. And just as an aside, so if you, if for those that are interested, me included, if you go to the USGS website, it's hard to find something that's less than 2.5. Is there, do you, how, how could folks, if they wanted to go and see the, the, the seismograph, is there a place they can go and actually see for themselves? Is that, do, do you folks at the Western Observatory have a website that has a live feed? Uh, yes. If you go to aki.bc.edu, and then you'll come up with the a page will come up. And then on the left, if you click, click on current seismograms, it will bring up the current uh, Weston Observatory seismogram. And right kind of in the, in the um, upper middle, you will see a, a large spike, and that's the aftershock. Okay, and you said it was around 3.15 this morning? Uh, yes, indeed. Okay, and so this was now a couple of days after the 3.8, I guess, that we had. Is that typical, you know, to see something, you know, in the several days that follow, and could there be more of these? Uh, the answer is yes and yes. This is very typical. Uh, an aftershock two days later, uh, three, four, five days, even a week or more, later. Um, more aftershocks like this are possible. And it's even possible that there will be a larger aftershock. Might be a 2.7, 2.9, even a 3.0. Okay, so, but they typically they're smaller than the than the original earthquake. Well, yeah, I mean, that's by definition, because if a bigger earthquake occurs, then we would call the first earthquake a foreshock, and then the, the new big earthquake becomes the main shock. Interesting, foreshock. That's a new term for me. Uh, learned a new term today. <laughs> um, now, I know we talked a little bit about this two weeks or two days ago, but um, your theory is that, you know, because we've seen some activity in this area before, you said the 1755 earthquake. Um, so the theory is that there's probably some sort of semi-active fault line in that area just off the coast of Maine. Yeah, that's probably a good, good way to put it. Uh, the I would not be surprised if there was some sort of fault that was being act activated by the modern uh, pressures on the, the tectonic plate today. And it's offshore. York, Maine is probably at the north end or that area offshore, York, Maine. I think the southern end may be as far south as, as east of um, Cape Ann. Interesting. Okay. And, and is there anything that we can sort of, I don't know, learn from, you know, successive earthquakes in that area? Is there, it, as more happen, is there something that we can that you, you folks can study or learn about the potential fault line going forward? Or is it just, are, are we there? I guess, are we there scientifically yet where we can actually take data and then infer things about what may happen in the future? Well, let me answer that question as a research scientist. I would love to see more aftershocks because if I had let's say half a dozen aftershocks or even more, then I could do some very precise calculations on the locations and see if I couldn't find the orientation of the crack that was associated with these with these earthquakes. You know, two events, yeah, you're going to get an orientation, but it may not mean that much. But half a dozen or even more, then I can really, that's something I can work with. So, so I'm actually hoping for a few more small aftershocks. Gotcha. Okay. And so do we know that this aftershock was, how, do you know how close in proximity it was to the original earthquake? Was it in the exact same area or, did, you know, how, how do we, and is that, can we even determine that? Well, within the, the constraint of our current locations, which is of the order of like two or three miles there, this shock and the main shock were in the same place. Um, later, after all the hubbub dies down, I'll do the more detailed analyses if we have enough aftershocks. And then I can get them them located to within like, I don't know, 100 yards or each or so of each other uh, and with that 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 level of resolution. And then I can really tell what the what the differences were, what the spatial orientations are and things like that. And what do we know, if anything, about uh, already about the fault line? Can you can you sort of um, theorize anything, you know, obviously, like, is you know, plates shifting or plates 
you know, hitting against each other? Do we know anything about what may be going on several miles deep in that area? Or is that something that's for future, you know, research? Well, this was uh, the, the analyses of the of the main shock uh, waveform shows that this was what we call a thrust earthquake. So so one side of the fault thrust over the other side. We don't know whether it was east over west or west over east. We can't tell that from the data. But that's that's the typical kind of earthquake we get in southern New England here. So so that was it, gotcha. it's a very typical earthquake. Gotcha. OK. And how does that differ from some of the major earthquakes felt in other parts of the country, West Coast or, you know, it, you know, is it I assume those are more major shifts in, in, in Earth or as opposed to what's going on here? Well, it, it's it's one kind of earthquake that is seen across the globe. In California, you have what, what we call strike-slip earthquakes, where the land slides horizontally. The t big Turkey earthquake in 2023 was was also a strike-slip earthquake. Um, so, but California does get these thrust earthquakes occasionally, also, and it's just you know to a seismologist, it's just a classification of the of the earthquakes and and gives us information about the direction of the pressures that's causing the earthquakes. Gotcha. Okay, well, this is great. Uh, I'd I'd love to know if you know again if there are a few more aftershocks and you're able to learn anything about what anything more about the area. Would love to would love to hear it. Um, I think our viewers are, are quite interested in this stuff. It's not you know feeling an earthquake here is a some somewhat unusual feeling. Folks are you know it's we're not used to it. Um, but I think you know judging by what you've had to say over the last couple of days, there certainly is no reason to be alarmed, I guess, at what's happening. You said this is a fairly typical thing. I know you said the original earthquake was one in five year event, I believe. Yes. So, so no reason to really be alarmed uh, other than, you know, this is something that we know exists, you know, this fault line here and, and we and certainly potential for future aftershocks in the next couple of days. Well, you know, people ask me, should we be alarmed? And my answer is we live in earthquake country, but the odds are very low. We can't predict earthquakes. So I don't know whether something will happen tomorrow or next week or maybe not for 100 years. So we should be prepared, but I'm not walking around expecting a huge earthquake tomorrow. Much more difficult to predict earthquakes than it is uh, a snow forecast, I guess you would say. Oh, the weather people have it so easy. We've got it so easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, John, I appreciate your your uh, your knowledge and and coming on this morning and again a couple of days ago, and um, we will stay in touch certainly. If if uh, I'd love to hear anything more, you you get to learn about you know this particular event and the fault line there. Thanks again. Okay, well, very good. And as I always tell reporters, talk to you next earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> will do. Thanks, John. <laughs>